And basically... <laughs> that apart. <laughs> to show them how it works. The it's frame a, fixture. It's a frame fixture yeah, for the, building a frame. Yeah, frame jig for building. I wouldn't call it a fixture. It's not very fixed. Ha. But um, the fully adjustable frame fixture. Um, you got your bottom bracket here. This slides for your chain stay length. It moves back and forth. Like, right. It's stuck. It slides well. Uh, this is your head tube hold. To, it pivots. To adjust head tube to angle. To adjust head tube angles. This is where your seat tube angle is going to go. Flips up out of the way. So when you're doing a run, I can flip that up and it's out of the way. And it makes for a quick, quick fixture. Uh, whatever. Frame um, swapping. Yeah. That's so cool. We're going cool. attack 50 at a time. And then you can go super in depth with all of it. That's so rad. Yeah, so, I mean, you always want to start with your bottom bracket first because it changes everything. And it's got it's got the, all the lines in there, so you can see well. I mean, it's like, it's written out pretty good. Yeah. Super accurate. So that's bottom bracket height. Yeah, this will be the bottom bracket height. So it just slides up and down. Move it to where it goes. And then you got your bottom bracket slide right here. And I made a, a, a scale for it. To put it forward and backward? Yeah, so that your chain stay length moves. And I made a, a ruler for it, just to make measuring a little bit more simple. But when I put the bolt in there, and it just gives you your... Oh, so then the, that center of that is your bottom bracket? Yeah, or your chain stay line. Or, yeah, that's... So yeah, I mean, it slides. This fixture will go as set up to about 12 and a half, almost short. And if closer, it's, I'm getting into really custom stuff, non-production. Right. This is cool. And then, that is cool. My dad is really a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> You're really a scientist. Uh, and then you got your bottom, your seat tube angle changer. Oh, that is so cool. So, so you just move it. Out. Yeah, and it'll get your seat tube. Because every time you adjust your bottom bracket height, it pivots your seat tube angle. Right, that's what's so crazy about frames is that any little adjustment affects everything else. Yeah, and then to you get it, I zero it off the frame. So then I'll move it to desired angle. No way, that is so So this cool. was 71, but I moved the bottom bracket, so now it's 70.5. Right. And then so then you have to adjust that yeah, bolt frame. to get it to be 71. Yeah, I actually just bought new bolts, too, that's got a big... That's so wild. These things now, big flat spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're just going to do it, put it all together. Then. Might as well. Head tube in there and everything. Dude, this is so cool. It's really cool. And then these ones will break this loose. And give you your head tube angle. Pivot. Right, so then you just move, move wow. it out of the way. Yeah. Oh. So we're going to go crazy and go 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost to a, uh, a nowhere frame. Yeah. Um, and then I'll go that way, and then I do, don't usually use this scale, but then you just measure your center to center on center. Oh, right, to get your top tube length. Wow, so how do you. How do you affect, how, how does that even work to get a desired head tube angle and a desired seat tube angle and then your head or top tube length? Yeah, so that, I've actually done it with one guy, which was cool because he wanted to go with a wild seat tube angle yeah. and head tube spot, but he wanted it to be in the same place that he's, his hands are now. So I just did put it in the computer and I was like, all right, he wants a 72. But he's running a 71, so we learned that we got to go like 3 sixteenths of an inch shorter of a top tube length. For wow. The to feel the same as it was. That was kind of fun to do. Math. Yeah. That is crazy. And then I I feel like these are the only ones that like don't matter as much. Because yeah. they just go where they end up. They go where they end up. Um, same with the down tube, I guess. Similar. Yeah. 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 Um, and these ones, like, I got a pretty quick system for... Getting all the angles. That is so, I use this so now for the, crazy. I've been going like, I'll zero this out. Yeah. And then I'll set this where the heights go. And then I can do my miter angle. I like within a 
you know, a tenth of a degree. And then with that, uh, so FBM's fixture, it was like to change the head tape angle, you lift it up on yeah. this thing, but my brother's milli gaming. So when I go to miter the top two miters, cut these loose, and then I can oh interesting twist it in and i put the like the digital scale on this mm -hmm. angle finder drop that down and you get your so this is basically how you ensure repeatability yeah so once this is all locked down you're making the same thing and, and every I, time i really like this being on the table and not pivoting because yeah. it's just well it once makes more sense that way right it's so solid yeah once it's there i mean it makes the cuts just super solid i don't pop but yeah if you have it stick out a lot you start breaking teeth and the whole saw is chipping um, the tubes in your top tube stop where it goes on the head tube. oh so like it'll rest against it, the yeah, top you bump tube it up so it hits the same spot every time keeps the angle perfect that makes every time perfect sense this one i don't actually use because i use this but i use this for setup for checking getting my miter angles and everything nice so it's that's good i started retacking these things so that the bottom different bottom bracket heights that's where this uh bottom bracket whatever stop is oh there you go so it'll hit the stop ah so, that, so it's centered yeah every time it's centered i don't have to do nothing there's a stop on the back side of the seat tube as well oh yeah i see now so each one and basically what we're looking at here is just how you make sure that every frame of that geometry in a run is exactly the same exactly thing. Exactly the same. I think you've told me before the importance of like welding. Yeah. And jigs, fixed. like to keep it straight yeah. once it's done too. What was up with that? Oh, that's more in the weld sequence. Cause I tack it oh, in. Oh, okay. I tack it in. My dad like said don't people. I just tack it in. And then I, I fixed your weld or table weld it. Actually, I'm in the middle of one right now. That's perfect. So yeah, actually, here's it's half or one third welded. So I do whatever the, the sequence to keep it from twisting. Yeah. Because if you weld here, that'll twist there. But if you weld in the bottom and don't, it twists into itself. Gotcha. Uh, it doesn't move, and then you can weld the side and it won't pull. There's a lot to this stuff. This is crazy. Uh, yeah, and then we got. You put this in the in the back here, so that way the back end can pull into itself because otherwise the dropouts, you know, mm. vary. So this way, tighten it down. You create a solid triangle back there too, where it can't twist. So through that in that process, you're ensuring that your frame is square, solid, yeah. out the gate, and you don't have to twist it to be square whereas you know metal has a memory it will mm -hmm. slowly go back that's so interesting i'm i'm gonna try this junction i want to do it for sam tedesco yeah because it's got more rigid it's i don't know it's semi like it's that. like like t1 it's but different like, it's a lower t1 it's more to me more sleek that's pretty cool i like that so.